Hello, and welcome to another installment of Practical Farms, where we take a look at different farms and make them more practical, depending on where we are at each phase of the game, in order to make them more cost-effective to suit our needs. Today we're in the nether in order to build a frog light farm. Now there's two different ways you can build a frog light farm. Uh, one involves building a spawning platform in the basalt delta biome. The other is to come to a bastion remnant, specifically a treasure bastion, and build one based around the magma spawner. They each have their advantages and their dangers to build, and today we're going to be building ours here at a bastion. Now, 90% of this farm is clearing out the bastion and collecting the frogs. So, let's get started in clearing this out. I'll show you how to build one step by step. Now the first thing I recommend, since working in a bastion is fairly dangerous, is that we get fully geared up with different armor in order to make sure that we're per perfectly safe in survival mode. Uh, I also recommend having several potions of fire resistance, uh, at least three, but up to your tolerance for risk and in falling into lava as not only is there lava here outside the bastion, but inside as well. Uh, so I recommend having those just in case you need them. Have a good bow, uh, whether you want to use infinity or mending, that's up to you. Uh, just make sure that it has power 5, or at least as good as you can get. And of course you need a really good sword as well. So let's go ahead and find our way in. Uh, I recommend going to one of the corners, uh, as we can then dig down from the top and find a safe place to set up our base of operation, if you will, uh, and just kind of make it to where we can do so without really risking our neck too terribly bad. And let's see. And down we go. And I recommend putting in some sort of wall or protective barrier so you can set up a base of operations if you get overwhelmed with the piglins or the piglin brutes, as piglin brutes can be one of the more difficult obstacles to building this farm. So just go ahead and build in some sort of protective safe zone, if you will, and then you should be good to go. However you want to do it to where you feel safe is good. Then let's just go in and being safe, uh, we're going to pick off any piglins that we might find. They're kind of hidden around here somewhere, and... I'm going to keep looking until I find them and sweep them layer by layer. Uh, the magma spawner is down in that area right there underneath that bridge. Uh, oh, I can hear some skeletons moving around. And of course the gas as well. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can't find some piglins or piglin brutes. There's one down on the floor next to the lava. And if I could just pick them off from up here without ever getting too close to aggro them, that's probably, oh, perfect shot. That's probably a good idea. Uh, if you're using power five, you can one-shot the piglins. It'll take a two-shot still to get the piglin brutes, as they're pretty tough. So I'm going to look around this bastion, clear out all the piglins and the brutes, and I'll get back with you as soon as that's done. See you in a second. Alright, so I believe I've gotten all, or at least most, if not all, of the piglins and the piglin brutes handled. Uh, if there's any left, they might be some uh, down on the bottom layer. Uh, so I'll deal with them in a minute. Uh, I also, if you take a look, you can see the spotter right there, just below the edge of that bridge. Uh, so this is going to be the area that we want to work in. So the next thing we want to do before we go any further is we want to make sure that that work area down there is safe. So the best way to do that is to fill in all that area down there uh, to get rid of the lava. And I'm going to use sand to do that. Now I'm looking around making sure there's no one around me. Um, we also don't want to get down too close because we'll activate that spawner. Uh, and we don't want to do that when the lava is down there because it's a little too dangerous. So let's go ahead and just from up here we can drop some sand. Of course it landed on top of that one piece of black stone. Uh, let's put it one over to the side. There we go. And if we just drop several in there, you'll see that it fills it in. It was only too deep, so uh, 
that's pretty good but we can just go ahead and come all the way down the line and uh, place some sand and fill in the lava uh, I guess I need to put one here and just put in however much it takes to get rid of the danger zone if you will and then come across and put a temporary block and just go ahead and do that all the way around I'll come back to you once I've got all of the lava handled and eliminated so we can go ahead and be continue with our build. Alright, so we've got the sand in covering most of the lava. There's a little bit left near where the magma spawner is. Uh, the only downside is that it has created a bit of a spawning platform. This is <laughs> for both gas and for skeletons. Uh, so what I've done is I've started putting in uh, torches to light up the area and putting bottom half slabs anywhere that I didn't feel like removing blocks. I also removed a lot of the blocks here in the middle. Uh, so all that's left now is we need to go down to the bottom and fill in the last bit of lava. But, but first we need to block the mob spawner so that we don't get any more magmas spawning. Right now you can see there aren't any because we stayed pretty high up above it. Uh, but we need to deactivate that spawner. And the problem is that magmas will spawn at any light level. So the only way to stop them is to place blocks around the spawner so that it will not have a chance for any of them to spawn. So let me go ahead and get down there carefully. I'm going to get onto that bridge right there. Uh, I'll probably end up removing it, but I want to go ahead and place some blocks in a diamond pattern above and around the spawning cage. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to get down there and I'll bring you back once we're in place. Alright, I'm down here now and it was a little bit hairy. So let me go ahead and remove some of these blocks. Uh, if I was doing this in full-on survival, it would be kind of a challenge. Uh, let me go ahead and drop in a little bit of sand and clear out a little bit of room so we can have a place to work on this without having to worry about uh, dealing with the magmas on their level. So all we need to do is come out four in each direction off the center. So that's one, two. three and four and then we're gonna like I said we're gonna go in a taxi cab diamond shape coming off the end here uh, let's go ahead and block along the side as well like I said in a diamond pattern now for the sake of this tutorial I'm gonna go ahead and just since I'm in creative go out here and place all of them but that's how you would do it you just be real careful going out four in each direction off the center and then fill in all along here along the top and along the sides of the spawner. And then do the same thing on this side. and fill in underneath and along the sides as well. Now that that is all blocked, let's go ahead and get rid of the magma cubes that are left and fill in all the lava. Uh, and also spawn proof the rest of this area. I'll be back with you as soon as that's all cleared up. Alright, now that we have completed removing all the lava from this room and gone ahead and spawn proofed everything, uh, I'm ready to move on to the next phase. But just to kind of show you how I went about doing it, uh, I went ahead and put in bottom half slabs across the entire room. I also removed quite a bit of the interior structure of the bastion. Uh, I did leave a couple there just to demonstrate that you don't have to remove everything. You can just put bottom half slabs on top of those structures and it will spawn proof. Uh, 
But the reason I spawn proofed all that stuff is not because it affects the rates of the farm. As when monster spawners attempt to spawn new magmas, they check the surface cap instead of the cave cap for mobs. And since the nether is entirely cave, any mobs that are spawned in the nether will not affect the spawning of magmas for this farm. The only reason we went ahead and spawn proofed everything though is that, well, I don't know about you, but I don't like having gas and skeletons spawning all around me. And once you've removed all the lava and many of the blocks, this becomes a gas and skeleton spawning chamber. So putting all these slabs and all the hundreds of torches I just spammed everywhere helps to assure that that doesn't happen. You can always remove and decorate this room as you see fit. Uh, if I was doing it in survival, I probably would just determine how much I really want to remove. At the very least, you do need to remove a 13 by 13 square around the magma spawner. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what we do next now that everything has been prepared for the farm. As you can see, I've already gone ahead and left a 13 by 13 square centered around the magma spawner and I've blocked all the spawns from that spawner. You also notice I put in some glass blocks uh, to indicate where the spawner checks to see if there's any magmas whenever it's attempting to spawn new magma cubes. Uh, it basically goes five above and five below the spawner to check and see if there's any mobs available. And so that means from the going from the middle block you go up five so one, two, three, four, five and then going from the block below, one, two, three, four, and five. So what we need to do next is lower our floor so that as the magmas are spawned, they will fall outside of the detection range of the spawner and allow us to increase the rates of our farm. So since the detection radius goes down to this block here, we want to go down an additional two blocks because the size of the large magma cube is two and a little bit tall, so we're going to go down two more. And at this layer we're going to put in powdered snow as that's what we're going to use to kill the magmas. And then we need to have a block below it for the frogs to go to eat the small magma cubes. And so this layer right there is going to be our floor. I'm going to go ahead and remove that and put in a block just so I know where that is. And then I'll come through and clear out all of these blocks uh, I'll also make sure that I have a little viewing area for a collection system over on this side of the farm. You can put it on any side you want, but I kind of think this will make a nice little area for us to collect our stuff. I did have to come in two blocks, as you notice, in order to put in our wall at this layer right here. So let me go ahead and clear all that out, and I'll come back to you as soon as we have all the prep work for this area done. Our 13 by 13 chamber has been dug out, uh, but I didn't quite finish it because I wanted to point out something that you will have to deal with quite often since bastions are in being in the nether. There tends to be a lot of extra lava just below the surface of your bastion. Um, mine in particular, I had a very large lava lake next to the bastion, so when I cleared it out I knew there was going to be extra lava to deal with below the main structure. It's fairly simple to, to deal with. Uh, that's why I also recommend having plenty of fire resist potions. Uh, but you can deal with them pretty easily by just going starting in the center of the area and working your way out layer by layer. And if you encounter any lava, just use regular blocks to delete the lava from the area. So let's go ahead and do that real quick together. Uh, just finish off this floor, uh, being careful not to step into the lava. And you just come through and replace each of these with solid blocks and you'll be just fine. Now once you've got that done you can complete the wall and once the wall is done we need to determine what sort of collection system we want to use. All right, the walls are all now completed for the lower portion of our farm. Uh, you'll also notice I left the viewing window open for our AFK spot and the collection area. Uh, so all that ne needs to be done now is to determine what kind of collection we want to use. There's a couple options available to you. You can either replace the entire floor with hoppers feeding into some chests in the AFK area, uh, or you can replace the floor with solid blocks and then put a rail car with hopper underneath it collecting it. Really it's just a matter of preference of which way do you want to go. Do you want to 
If you have plenty of iron, you can go with just completely replacing every single one of the four blocks in this area with a hopper chained together feeding into your chests. But if you need to conserve resources, you can always go ahead and use rails and minecart with hopper. Um, as that one takes a little extra work, I'm going to demonstrate that. Let me grab my powered rails and regular rails as well as our lever to work with here. And I'm just going to dig out an additional layer for the floors, plus a layer for the minecart with hopper. And then I'm going to put a subfloor in to place all of our rails on, just because I tend to like how it looks. You don't have to replace that layer. You can just put the rails straight onto the netherrack. That's perfectly fine. Uh, I just like how it looks on top of other blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that out, and you can do the same if you're working along with me. You can hit pause, and we can get back together once we have this area all cleared out, and we can start putting our rails in together. Now that our subfloor is in, it's time to put in our rail car collection system. Uh, you'll notice I left a block here just as a visual reference for where our floor is going to be. Also a block to represent the layer that the powdered snow is going to go, and then also where the detection range of our spawner is. So what we're going to do first is come over here and put in a chest to be our collection point. Uh, we're going to break a block here and here and put in a double chest. Uh, if you want to put in more storage, you can add as much as you'd like. Uh, it's really up to you of how much you want to put in. Now we're going to go in and put in some hoppers pointing into that chest. Uh, I recommend putting in at least a row of hoppers all the way across like this. Uh, you can put in a double row all the way across, which is what we're going to do, uh, just to speed up the collection. Uh, but I've run tests on it using, this is a total of 11 hoppers, and it works pretty well, but I recommend using no less than that. And putting in a double row will certainly keep up with the production of this farm much more easily. All right, so we've put in one row. Uh, let me go ahead and add in a second. All right, now that those are in, we want to go ahead and put in our rails for our minecart with hopper. Uh, start with a powered rail right here, and we're going to put in a lever so we can turn it off and on. And there you go. And then we just line rails all the way across where they go across the hoppers. And then circle back around. And then you can use whatever method you want to power the rails every so often, but I'm going to use a redstone block and just go across like this and create a serpentine pattern going all the way back and forth until you reach the end of this platform. Let me go ahead and do that real quick and we'll get back together in just a second. And then on the last block, we put in a block of redstone uh, and a powered rail. That way, when the cart reaches the end of the line, it will automatically just bounce back and follow the path all the way around and collect all the drops. The next thing to do is to come in and place our floor. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to come into the end over here by the door. And then all you have to do is just place it like that, and it will automatically put it at the right height. So I'm going to go and place in my floor, and I'll be back with you as soon as that's in place. Okay, our floor is in, so now it's time to put in our powered, powdered snow. And what we're going to need to do is place 25 blocks of powdered snow for this farm at this layer right here. Now the downside to this is that powdered snow does not stack you're going to have to have 25 buckets of this stuff in order to make the farm. It's a little annoying, but that's just the way it is. So the way to place it in, uh, is since we have an 11 by 11 interior of this farm, is to come over here to the corner and then come out to, we're going to place our powdered snow right here. So place a temporary block there and there, and then place your powdered snow, and then you can remove those temporary blocks and then just repeat the process going in a square grid pattern down the length and width of the farm 
placing a temporary block to separate it and then another bucket of powdered snow and so on until you reach the far end of this wall and you can see there's a gap between the wall and the, and the block and then between each of the blocks of powdered snow. Then come back remove these temporary blocks and repeat the pattern coming across this side and then fill it in until the entire square platform is covered by this by 25 buckets of snow. Let me go ahead and do that and we'll get back together as soon as those are in place. Alright, so all of our 25 powdered snow blocks are in place and the way this is going to work is that when the magma cubes spawn, both the large and the medium sized ones, and they fall down to this area, they will be large enough that they will their hitbox will be inside the powdered snow and powdered snow will cause damage to them and cause them to break into these smaller forms and once they reach the smallest sized magma cube the frogs that we put in place will eat them and produce plenty of frog lights. So now that that's in place let's go ahead and we'll remove our temporary blocks here but we're not going to remove the rest of these until the frogs are in place uh, all we need to do now is go ahead and complete the walls all the way up to the top and I'm going to go ahead and just put in glass here and solid blocks all the way the rest of the way around but really you can use any block that you want uh, make it look as nice as you want, decorate it in any way that you think looks good, uh, or you can just stay completely functional and just use cobblestone or whatever other block you want. Uh, if you want to be totally efficient, you could also use all the blackstone blocks that you got from tearing down all the extra things inside of this room. So go ahead and finish that block all the way up to where the top of your farm will be here above this layer right there, and remove these temporary blocks of course and once you have that in place we'll get back together and go pick up some frogs to make the farm operational all right so I have my roof in place on top of the farm and as you can see I use glass blocks for this as this will not only give me a good view of what's going on inside from above uh, it'll also make it spawn proof from gas and other mobs spawning on top of our farm now the next thing we need to do is to get our frogs into place. Now I highly recommend getting as many of the frogs as possible from the overworld in a portal that's close to your farm as you don't want to have to carry frogs through the nether uh, an incredibly long distance. So if you can find a place in the overworld where you have at least the cold and temperate biomes right next to each other you can then build a portal from there into the nether and then bring your frogs into the farm. If you can't find a warm biome that's nearby in the overworld, you can always place a, your tadpoles here in the nether and then just throw a splash potion of water breathing onto the frogs. In bedrock condition, this will make them survive long enough for them to mature into fully grown frogs. Uh, you can always use slime balls as well to speed up the growth process. That way you can have one of each type of frog in your farm. I recommend having at least three of each type. Uh, I like putting in five of each type, but at least three will be able to keep up with the rates of the farm. So. In order to do that, I've gone ahead and i figured out the coordinates that are close to a temperate and cold biome. The coordinates are right about here, I believe. So let me go ahead and build my portal, and then we'll light it up and see where it takes us. If you end up going somewhere that's a good location but too far down underground, what you can always do is go to that coordinate in the overworld, break the original portal, and then rebuild it on the surface near where you want it to go just as long as it's not too terribly far away from the original coordinates. Alright, let's go through and see what happens. Alright, here we are. Perfect. This is a temperate biome and yes, this is a cold ocean biome to where we can go ahead and get our tadpoles and bring up frogs here. Now, I recommend creating out in this cold ocean you can just kind of bring out some blocks and create a containment unit if you will just something like this to where you can make sure you have plenty of space for your tadpoles to grow up and not have them disappear 
when you're waiting for them to grow and mature and then just come like this and this will be a perfect place to put at least three tadpoles now if you want to do five you're going to need to um, expand this a little further so that you don't have to worry about placing them now I'm going to go ahead and use a spawn egg to place them and as you can see green is the color of the cold water oh my look at that we're just on the edge of a beach so that one is actually a temperate but if we go here we have our cold water and once you've got them in place grab a lead to carry whoa you got to be careful with them you might even want to put some sort of roof on top until you have them all in place there we go and let's bring them along over to our portal and then I'll do the same thing for some more temperate ones in a minute and then I'll do it in the nether for warm biome frogs once I get them in place we'll come back together and we'll activate the farm alright so I have all my frogs in place I have five of each type uh, so all that's left now is to activate the farm is to remove the blocks that are temporary blocking the spawning locations now the best way to do this is to come in from the side and remove the blocks as far as you can reach and then come back on the other side and remove those, as many blocks you couldn't reach from this side um, so just kind of reach in there and just start breaking them being very careful not to break the spawner now if we can't quite reach it we might have to jump in there whoa <laughs> and do a little help on breaking those blocks that we can't reach but let me go ahead and do this real quick so that when they start spawning they fall in and you can see they're already starting to die in the powdered snow and then the frogs will also go in and eat the baby magmas I'm going to go ahead and remove all the other blocks that I can reach from the other side and we'll be back together once this is all done. Okay, so I have all of the blocks removed and it's going ahead and spawning some magmas. Let's go ahead and go down here and turn on our collection system. Oh yeah, there's plenty there. Uh, so let's go ahead and you can see we have the minecart with Hopper and it's activated. And yeah, it's collecting plenty of those for us already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clear that out so it'll be a fair test. Let it run for about an hour and we'll come back together and see what a typical result can be from running this farm. I'll be back with you in just a moment. Our hours worth of testing are done and we have results. I went ahead and put it in peaceful mode so that we wouldn't have any additional frog lights being produced while we took a look at our results. So let's go ahead and see how it turned out. As you can see, nearly 27 stacks of frog lights were produced, uh, as well as five stacks of magma creams. The distribution for the different frog lights was fairly evenly distributed. Uh, one hour sample size is really too small of a sample size to really get a fully rounded out number of how many frog lights will be produced on average. Typically over many hours worth of testing, I've seen that it does end up being pretty close to even all the way across the board. But due to the random nature of the spawning and which frogs eat the magmas uh, you get different colors each time you run this farm uh, this one ender pearl is kind of a funny story as i was doing the test I, occasionally an enderman would teleport in from outside the bastion and would wander into the powdered snow and a couple of them died and apparently one dropped an ender pearl but it's certainly not an ender pearl farm and so there you have it, the results of what you can expect from this farm. Uh, 27 stacks of frog lights is pretty typical, and that's not bad at all. And that about does it for today. I certainly hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and it helps you out in your world. And if it does, I would greatly appreciate it if you left a comment down below, letting us know exactly how it worked out for you. But that's it for now. I hope you see you again in the next one. But until then, this is Texas PK. Be good to each other. Bye.